The ongoing tension between the East and the West has put the global economy in a very tight spot. This brings investors to be concerned that there might be a potential war coming between Ukraine and Russia. With the current situation, where is the US economy positioned and what will change during this time? And how will you, as an investor, manage your portfolio? Welcome to Empire Investing, where we'll be sharing the latest in stock market news, technology, and innovative investment strategies for aspiring millionaires and billionaires. If this is your first time watching our channel, welcome and please do consider subscribing to see more videos just like this. And with that, let's get started. Russia's invasion has caused a massive shock and fear all over the world and especially in Ukraine. The war may be between two countries, but the impact of this war is felt by the entire world. As of the moment, the European Union is sending $500 million worth of weapons to Ukraine. This is the first time that the EU has sent weapons to a country being invaded. There are other countries involved in this war too. Germany will supply Ukraine with 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 anti-aircraft missiles. Biden has also joined in and will supply up to $350 million worth of weapons as well. The involvement of these countries has never been done before since the Cold War. There's a lot of speculation that Russia will win this war because Russia has always been prepared to go to war. If Russia wins, Ukraine will be forced to be pro-Russia. When the current government is ousted, how long will the resistance continue? A new Cold War with fortified borders is expected. There's still a chance of a military escalation, however. Financial penalties have been imposed on Russia's central bank. There's no doubt that this will have a significant influence on the global economy as well. Starting with how the US economy would radically change, we must first understand the existing state of the economy in the United States. According to recent economic data, the US economy is humming along pretty nicely. The the unemployment rate has fallen to its lowest level in more than 52 weeks and salaries have been rising. Consumer expenditure has risen by 12% year over year as a result of the government's excessive money printing. M2 money, a measure of how much money is in circulation, has increased by 42% during the last two years. The US GDP normally rises in tandem with an increase in M2. A 15% increase in M2 and a 15% increase in US GDP have been recorded in the last quarter. In the near future, we'll be discussing how Ukraine-Russian tensions will affect these initiatives. Inflation is being pushed higher by an increase in M2, which is being compounded by supply chain problems. Due to the country's poor shipping ports, the US in particular faces supply chain challenges. There hasn't been much of a shift in foreign currency rates for the dollar despite all of this. Several other countries have also pumped money into their economies, which has been a contributing factor. This figure compares the US M3 with Europe's M3 money because M2 data is not gathered in Europe. Deposits over $100,000 are included included in M3, which is similar to M2. The percentage change in M3 is seen in this graph. M3 is rising in both Europe and the United States, as can be shown. Commodity prices have risen as a result of the massive money printing. Consumers have again had to foot the bill for these increased prices. The impact of Russia's conflict on the global economy is going to be critical in the near future. Federal banks all over the world are now becoming aggressive due to the high inflation. Banks are now combating inflation before the problem becomes long-term. Interest hikes up to 4-6% to are expected to occur in the stock market. This increase in rate will affect the rates across the economy, which in turn reduces the supply of money. The current rate in the United States is 0.08%. Four 25 basis point rate increases, on the other hand, would bring it to roughly 1.08%. Basis points are one hundredth of a percentage point, thus 425 basis points equals 1%. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke had originally predicted that the central bank would raise interest rates by 50 basis points, or one half of a percent, in March. Now that the conflict has begun, that choice is no longer an option. A rate increase of 50 basis points this year by the Fed is possible, however. The central banks are deferring rate increases because of the threat of a recession during a time of conflict. The Fed will raise its rates 11 times in 2023 as predicted by Goldman Sachs. This means that a recession might happen in 2023 because of the delay. The Fed might also begin quantitative tightening which is when the Fed sells bonds. When this happens, the economy supply of money will be reduced, lowering MT and demand as well. 
This is the level of M2 at the end of the 2008 recession, starting at $100 billion. If the pandemic didn't happen, the trend would have gone up to about $200 to $220 billion. However, due to the pandemic, M2 money is currently at $259 billion. The Fed's debt, which was expected to be $3 trillion, is now at $6 trillion. Quantitative tightening will most definitely slow down the economy. By delaying this move, inflation can get out of control. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine are raising the prices of commodities in oil and natural gas. This increase has affected the economy because consumers would now have to pay more to heat up their homes or to use transportation. The conflict drove up the prices of oil from $70 to $100 per barrel. Russia supplies almost 25% of oil and 40% of natural gas to Europe. With sanctions and damages to these pipelines, the supply is reduced because three of those pipelines run through Ukraine. Ukraine also produces 14% of the global wheat supply and a huge portion of it is exported to Europe. This conflict will have a huge impact to food and energy prices in Europe. If the supply for wheat and oil decreases, the prices will rise up. To counter this, US supply might move to Europe which will then and increase the prices in the United States. This shows that the prices all over the world are connected together. Russian sanctions will also have a significant global impact. Sanctions have mostly targeted the financial and technological sectors of the economy. They have, however, refrained from completely cutting Russia off from the SWIFT payment system. The SWIFT payment system is where all international banks go to settle accounts and transfer funds. If Russia were to be instantly removed from the SWIFT system, European banks would be unable to deal with Russian bank debt. If that happens, Europe will have difficulty paying for Russia's purchases of gas and oil. Additional restrictions are being imposed on SWIFT, but analysts believe that at least one bank will continue to use SWIFT in order for Europe to purchase oil from Russia. As a result, with energy and food costs expected to stay at high levels, federal banks throughout the world face a challenge. Even while these appear to be short-term issues, there is a possibility that they will exasperate long-term inflation difficulties. To keep prices low, the United United States and other countries should try to release part of their strategic petroleum reserves. This might potentially lower oil prices to the $70 to $80 range. However, due to short-term political issues, oil output is unlikely to expand by much. This is because oil companies do not want to borrow money to dig for oil at $90 per barrel if prices are likely to fall to $70 to $80 in the near future. There are a wide range of issues going on right now. The inflation rate is above 7%. We have a conflict that's driving up oil and food costs. We have massive money printing and interest rates are artificially low. While attempting to keep unemployment low, the Federal Reserve must cut the money supply and raise interest rates. That is incredibly tough to do without causing the economy to implode. The stock market dislikes uncertainty and our current position falls squarely into that category. The question is no more if the economy economy will slow, but how much it will slow? Volatility is one method to look at the market's unpredictability. To assess volatility, we can check the market's VIX or VOL. The vol was in the mid-30s to near 40s earlier this year. This gave the S&P 500 a 40% probability of falling to 3,800 or rising to 5,100. While there is still room for more decline, recent market occurrences indicate some market support. The fact that NATO and the US are not actively defending Ukraine has bolstered present market levels. The economy is rapidly growing while increasing energy prices may momentarily stifle growth. This might be advantageous since it contributes to the Fed's goal of reducing inflation. Treasury bond long-term rates are basically in line with where they were prior to the outbreak. This is a positive indicator since it suggests that the market expects that interest rates and inflation will return to normal in the long run. Short-term bond rates, on the other hand, present a completely different narrative. The short-term section of the rate curve indicates that the Fed is behind in boosting interest rates. The Fed's yield differential with a one-month Treasury bond rate is approximately 100 and 50 basis points or one and a half percent. So where are interest rates anticipated to rise? These are the interest rate assumptions that the market has factored in. Rates are expected to be one and a half percent higher than they are currently by December of 2022, which is a significant increase. According to the market projection, inflation will also be pushed down to approximately three percent. 
The S&P faces less danger as central banks throughout the world raise interest rates. Higher costs are anticipated to cause greater misery in Europe than in the United States. The U.S. market is expected to beat the European market. As the Fed raises interest rates faster than Europe, the dollar's value will rise in respect to European currencies. For the most part, Asian markets are expected to hold up well. However, because Russia is forbidden from acquiring technology for military purposes, Japan and South Korea's tech-centric approach might slow. I believe Russia will make such acquisitions via China. Latin America and developing markets will most likely make it through unscathed. However, because the US dollar is expected to rise in value relative to other currencies, the advantage of any possible outperformance from Latin America may be lost due to the translation of foreign currency to US dollars. When investing abroad, keep in mind that you are investing in another country's currency. That currency's value changes in proportion to the US dollar. Domestically, with inflation rising yet customers paying higher prices for products, enterprises in the non-durable area are expected to perform well. These are items that we use on a daily basis, such as toothpaste, razor, shampoo, and so on. During recessions, companies in this industry tend to fare pretty well. This includes liquids such as water and beer, which may all keep value during a recession. Luxury labels such as Louis Vuitton and Ralph Lauren, on the other hand, would undoubtedly struggle in a recession. As the escalation and new Cold War continue, cybersecurity stocks such as Palantir and others are expected to do well. Banks and energy are two more investments that have done well in the past. That trade, particularly the energy trade, is going to be more crowded and risky. If the economy slows sufficiently, the bank trade may also begin to flatten and unravel. Today's scenario is quite fluid. On a daily basis, a lot might change. However, with so many variables in play, the VIX should be regularly monitored. That's all for today. How do you think the tension between Ukraine and Russia will play out? Join the discussion in the comments below and if you like the video, please do click that like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video.